Hey, what's up everybody? We've just added a combo box component to the headless UI library, and I thought that would be pretty cool to build a comment palette with it. Here's a demo of what we're going to build. So I can toggle my command palette with the keyboard shortcut, command K, and then I can search for projects and I can navigate with the arrow keys. And if I select one project, I will be taken to this project page. One of the key aspects of command palettes is they are keyboard first. They're a power user tool for folks who want to access things really quickly without leaving the keyboard. Let me show you some real world example of command palettes. Here I am in Figma and I can open the command palette with command P and then search and you can see as I type, the results get updated. I can navigate with the arrow keys and press enter or escape to get out of there. If I open the developer tools in Chrome, this time I'll use shift command P and we have this command palette coming up so I can search for disable to disable JavaScript or other things. And once again, I can navigate with the arrow keys, press enter or escape. One more example is VS Code. So if I type command P, I can start searching for settings, for example, and you get the ID. I can navigate with the arrow keys, I can select or I can escape. All right, we're going to use this Figma design to build our command palette. And let's take a look at our starting point. So we have this existing project management app, which is built with Tailwind CSS and Next.js. We're using Tailwind UI components. And since on this template, we have things like these icons, this search field and this drop down menu, we have a few extra dependencies installed on the project. So of course, we're using Tailwind CSS, but we're also using the React version of Headless UI, the React version of Hero icons, and we're using the first party forms plugin for Tailwind CSS. We are going to build our comment palette in its own component, which actually already exists with some placeholder text. Right now, it's only outputting a styled paragraph, and we're actually not even rendering this component anywhere in our application at this point. Since we want our comment palette to work everywhere on every page in the project, we will go in the layout.js component, which is shared across all pages. And here we'll import this component, and we'll insert that right at the start of the layout's rendered JSX. And while we're here, let's right away pass some data to this component through a projects prop. That data would typically come from an API or a database, but for the sake of this video, we're just using some static data. We'll have an array of projects, and at the top where I import the team's data, I will also import the project's data. Okay, so now we're rendering our command palette components in our layout, and here it is up there. We don't just want to display our command palette like this at all times, and it's very common that command palettes are displayed in a modal window. Now, models and dialogues are deceptively complicated to implement properly. Fortunately, Headless UI comes with the dialogue component that makes this really easy to implement. It automatically handles things like keyboard navigation, focus trapping, window scroll locking, and more for you. That is going to really help us with the implementation of our command palette. We are back in our command palette component, and so I will first import this dialogue component from Headless UI. And remember, I already have this package install. If you did not, you'd need to npm install at headless UI slash react in your project. I won't do that here since it's already installed. Okay, and to start with, I will simply wrap this component in a dialogue component. Now, heads up, this is going to break the site since the dialogue component needs an open prop and an unclose prop. We get to decide when we want the dialogue to be open or close, and then we pass this information to the dialogue component and it takes care of all the rest. So here, let's add an open prop and I'll set that to true for now. And then on close will be a function which role is to close the dialogue. All we need here is a single piece of local state and I will import the use state hook from React so we can create that piece of state. I will create a const is open, which is our state value, and then a setter for that value that we'll call set is open. And we'll use the use state hook here and set the default value to true. So now I can replace true here with is open. And all we need to do to close the dialogue is to set is open to false. And actually the dialogue component in headless UI is intelligent enough to know what to do with the state setter. So we can just pass set is open here and it will know what to do with it to close the model. All right, so check this out. Now our dialog is open, but I have many ways to close it. I can hit the escape key and it's gone. I can click outside of this dialog. So if I click here, it'll close it as well. All right, so the logic and behavior is already working. Now let's apply some styles to this dialog to make it look like a modal window. I will add some utility classes to the dialog component directly. And before I do that, I'll just remove all the classes except the background color on our placeholder element, just so we don't get confused. These were just here to display our placeholder on top of everything right at the top. 
We want the dialog to use the entire space of the viewport and seen on top of everything. So I'll use the position fixed class. And to make sure it spans across the entire viewport, I will use inset zero, which will set the top, right, bottom, and left property to zero. Right now, you can't see any difference since it's transparent. But if I were to add BG purple 600, you can see our dialog is definitely covering the entire viewport. Right, let me remove that class. And let's add a little bit of padding, P-4, just so that our modal window doesn't touch the edges of the viewport. And I want to move it a bit further away from the top. So I could go PT-20 or PT-40, but it really depends on the height of the screen here. And I kind of want the top of my modal window to be about a quarter from the top. So 25% from the top of the viewport. And to do that, I can use an arbitrary value here of 25 viewport height units. Perfect. And one more important thing I need to do since our dialog is fixed is to have a class of overflow y auto, which will make the content scroll vertically if it's higher than the viewport height. Otherwise, we couldn't access the content below the viewport. OK, I think that's a good start for the dialog itself. Now I want to style this dialog window inside it. So let's move down to this div. And first, I want to add a max width with max w, and we'll go with extra large. All right, and let's center it with mx auto. Nice. It doesn't look too problematic right now, but let's see what happens when I change the background of this window to white. Yeah, so now it becomes kind of blended with the background, and it's obvious that we need some contrast going between the modal window itself and its background. So of course we can add a border and a shadow to this element, but something that is quite common with modal windows is to have an overlay between the modal window and the rest of the website with some level of transparency. This is so common that the dialog component actually provides its own dialog overlay, and we're going to need to style it with classes. And here, once again, I will go with fixed and inset zero so that it covers the entire viewport. And since we won't be able to see that, I will also add a background color of BG gray 500. And yep, we definitely have an overlay. I think we should add some transparency to it. So I will modify my background color of gray 500 by adding an opacity of 75%. Nice, that looks great. But you can see that our model window is actually now behind our overlay. We have a little stacking issue here. And since our overlay has the position of fixed, we need to give a position else than static to our window. I'll use relative here so that it comes back on top. Ah, very nice. It's starting to look like a model window now. If we look at our Figma design, we'll want some rounded corners and also a nice soft shadow in the background. We will go with rounded extra large. Nice. And let's add the shadow of 2XL. Sweet. And if I zoom on the edge of our box here, you can see that there is a subtle border here along the edge. And we're going to use a ring utility with a very low opacity here to achieve that. Let's add a class of ring-1 for the width, ring black for the color. So you can see this black outline now, which is actually a box shadow. And we will reduce the opacity to 5% with slash 5. So it's extremely subtle, but it does add a little bit of depth. All right, so with this, we have a really good foundation to build our comment palette instead of this placeholder text. This comment palette will have a search section and then a results section. And we're going to use Headless UI's combo box component, which provides all the pieces that we need to build that sort of UI. At the top, where I import the dialog component, I will also import the combo box component. And our combo box component here will be actually this markup that we already have styled a little bit. So I will replace this div with the combo box component. And once again, heads up, I will break things. As you can see, the combo box is being rendered as a fragment, which actually disappears from the DOM. And we're trying to have a class name attribute on this element that actually doesn't exist in the DOM. An easy fix here is to use the as prop, which allows us to choose what elements a component should render as. And here, since we've replaced a div, I will go as div. All right, and it's working just like before, but now we have access to a ton of great features since we're using Headless UI's combo box component. We're not gonna handle that just yet, but I will pass an on change prop and basically what we want to do here is when the user selects one of the options inside the combo box, we want to navigate that user to the selected project page. Let's keep this comment here for now and we'll come back and take care of this a little bit later. All right, so next let's build the search area of our command palette. We have an icon and then an input field and let's start by building the input. I'll get rid of our placeholder paragraph here and in place I will use a combo box dot input, which will be a search field. All right, so here it is. It is semi-styled already since we're using the forms plugin, but I will add some additional styles to make it look like the design that we want. 
Let's add a class name attribute. And first, let's make it use the full width with W full. Nice. Let's also add a placeholder text of search dot dot dot. Right now, our input is masking the nice rounded corners and borders of our window. So let's make a few changes. We'll have a background of transparent, BG transparent. We will remove the border with border zero. And you can see we still have this focus ring here, which I will remove with focus ring zero. Next, let's make the input text a little bit smaller with text SM. And we'll change the color of the placeholder text and the input text. So the text will be gray 800 and the placeholder text will be gray 400. All right, nice. Finally, I wanna just add a little bit of height to this search component. So I will add H12. All right, it's looking pretty good. Still needs a little bit of padding here, but we'll take care of this next. Looking at the design, we want to add this search icon here on the left. Like I mentioned at the start, this project is using hero icons and I can import the search icon from at hero icons slash react. And we want the one from the outline collection. So let's go down here and try to just have the search icon before our input field. And it's going to look terrible, but let's try that. And <laughs> yep, I think it could be a little bit more subtle. The first easy win is to control the size of this component with a height of six and a width of six utilities. Much better. And we'll change the color of this icon with text gray 500. I want the icon and the search input side by side. So I will have a flex container here, which will wrap both these elements. And to vertically align these, I will use the item center utility. Nice, we're getting close. And like I mentioned before, we need some horizontal padding and I can use PX-4 here. All right, this is looking great. Just like the combo box itself, the combo box that input receives an unchange prop. And this one is going to be responsible to handle our search logic. Before we can wire up the search, we need to actually display some results. Right now, we're showing nothing in our UI. So we're going to have a wrapper that has a list of options. And then each option will have its individual option component. Under the combo box that input, let me scroll down a bit. I will here have a combo box that options component, which by default renders as a UL element and will be the container for our individual combo box dot option elements, which by default are rendered as an LI. So let's have some placeholder content here. We'll have project one and I'll duplicate that a couple of times, two and three. Let's look at it and notice that my three options are not showing until I start typing. So if I press a key, now the three projects are showing. So that's the default behavior in the combo box component where the options are only showing once you start interacting with the combo box. In our case, this is the dialog opening and closing that makes this decision. So we're going to use the static prop on the combo box options to opt out of the default behavior. I will simply add static here. So now if I refresh the page, the three projects are already showing from the start, which is the behavior that we want. All right, so instead of displaying this dummy hard-coded project here, let's actually display the data that is passed to our components. Remember how we passed a projects prop to our comment palette in the layout component? Let's try display those projects now. I'll come at the top of my component here and receive this projects prop. And for now, let's just console log it. I'll open up my console. And nice, you can see that we have an array of 12 projects here with all our data. So let's remove the console log before we forget. And down inside the combo box options, instead of these hard-coded options, I'll keep just one, we will iterate over this projects array. Projects.map, and for each project, I will return a combo box option. Now this option needs a key with an individual identifier. We can use project.id for that. And instead of a hard-coded project one, I will have a div here, which will be handy in a second. And then let's just output for now the project.title. And nice, look at this. We already have all our project title displaying really nicely. Of course, they need a little bit of styling love. We want them to look like this. So let's apply some utilities to these. I will actually first add some utilities to the options wrapper container. So up here, I will add a class name attribute. And we'll first add some vertical padding with py-4. Okay, and we'll make the text of all the options a little bit smaller with text SM. While this is not a problem here with this number of results, this would certainly become problematic with way more results. We wanna have a max height to our window here so that we are not having a really, really, really long window that looks awkward. 
So I will use max height and then I will use something a little bit too small just for demo purposes. So I'll go with 40. And obviously now we have a problem with the content overflowing. So I will add the class of overflow y dash auto. And you can see that just like this, we can now scroll through our elements inside the window and we are capped to a maximum height. I want to make the window a little bit higher than this. I want to use 96 here. And I think that all the elements will actually fit in that window. Yep. All right, great. So now let's apply some styles to each individual option. So I'll add a class name to this div here. And we will go with px-4 for horizontal padding and py-2 for vertical padding between the elements. Now let's make something interesting. We're also going to display the team in which each project belongs. Like you can see here, GraphQL API in engineering. And that's kind of why I had a div element here because I want to have a span element here in which I'll display the project title. And I will duplicate this and we'll have a span that says in project.team. Nice, so let's style it to create some separation. On the parent class, I will have a spacing utility with space x1. On the first span, which is the project title, I will have a font medium, a text color of text gray 900. And for the other span, we will have a text color of text gray 400. All right, that's looking really good now. Another thing I want to add is this separator between the search and the results. You can see in Figma, we have this thin line here. So we can go in the common parent of both these elements, which is our combo box. And here I will add a divide y utility, which will create a vertical separator between each element. And since the default color is a bit too dark, I will use divide gray 100 for the divide color. All right, this is very nice. Let's pause for a second to appreciate what we cannot appreciate because we can't see it. Right now, if I hover over the elements or navigate with the arrow keys, you don't get any feedback and may think nothing's happening. But the combo box is doing a ton of work for us already behind the scenes. We just don't have any styles in place to reflect that. Right inside the combo box option component, let's have a render function here. And we're going to receive a render prop called active, which is made available by Headless UI's combo box option component. And I will move all these GSX here inside of the function. So Headless UI doesn't have any styling opinions, but it's going to give you the tools to make your own decisions. So here I'm going to change this to use template tags. And inside my class name string, I will now do a check. Is the current combo box active? Question mark. And if it is, I will add a background class of BG Indigo 600. And if it's not, I will add a class of BG white. And now look at what happens as soon as I start hovering over the results or using my arrow keys down, 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 up, up, up. As you can see under the hood, Headless UI is managing the logic for which element is active, has wired up the keyboard navigation, which is really, really nice. All right, things don't look that great with the dark text over indigo background. So let's fix that. Once again here, I will use backticks and check if the current option is active. If it is, we are going to have a text color of white. And if it's not, we're going to grab this text gray 900 and place it in this section of the ternary. All right, much better. Let's do the same with the project team. If the current option is active. If it is not, we're going to have a text gray 400 color that we had. But if it's active, we're going to go with text indigo 200. And look at this now, this looks really, really nice. You might notice a problem down here where we've lost our rounded corners since we've added a background color of white or indigo to our individual options. And that's an easy fix in the combo box component, which wraps everything. I can add an overflow hidden class and we're back to our nice rounded corners. All right, this is starting to look really good. The next thing I want to look at is the actual search behavior. Right now, when I type a search, absolutely nothing happens. It's just an input field and we haven't wired any logic to that. By default, the combo box doesn't handle any search functionality and this is by design. This allows you full flexibility in your implementation. You can do a simple string matching filtering. You can implement a fuzzy search library. You can do a fetch call to an API or whatever works for your specific scenario. For this video, we're going to implement a string matching that's going to look at the project titles. I'll need another piece of state here. So I'll create another use state hook const query and set query equals use state defaulting to an empty string. So we're going to wire this query piece of state to our search input. 
Let's scroll down to the input component. And here where we left ourselves a comment, we're going to use the set query state setter that we've just created. And I need to receive an event here and I will set the query to event.target.value, which is essentially the value of the input field. And just to demo that, I will have quickly a pre-tag here where we will display the query state just to see that it works. So if I start typing in my search input test one, two, three, you can see the piece of state here update immediately. All right, let's get rid of that pre-tag. And now that we know that this piece of state is working, we can use this query state value to filter our project by the title. Let's create a bit of space here and I will create a const filtered project. First of all, we're going to check if we have a query because if we haven't started typing, we don't want to show any result. And in case the query is empty, we're going to return an empty array. So we essentially don't show any results, but we still have an array. So we don't have an error when we try to map over it. So in case we have a query, we want to filter out our project. So projects.filter. And for each project, we want to only keep the projects where the project.title includes the query. So that should work, but there will be a little issue with this. I'll go down in the combo box options. And here, instead of mapping over all the projects, I will map over the filtered projects, which is the new array that we've created. So let's try that API. And wow, it works. But check this out. If I have a lowercase i instead of the uppercase i, it will not work. API returns nothing. In other words, it's case sensitive. And this is likely not what you want from a search where the user is likely to type everything in lowercase. So we're going to standardize our search here by adding two lowercase on both sides. So project.title.2 lowercase includes query.2 lowercase. So now the comparison is lowercase on both sides. And so API will work, but API lowercase will also work. iOS onboarding. It works really nicely. And again, we've done a simple string matching here, but you can implement anything that you need since you have full control over the implementation. All right, right now, when we have no search results, you can see that we still have that space with the padding for the combo box options. And it would probably be much better to remove that space when we haven't started typing a search. Similarly, if I type something that doesn't yield any result, I should have a message here that says no results found. Let's implement that now. First, I'm going to wrap the entire combo box that option into a conditional check. So we will take filtered project and we will check that the length of this array is greater than zero. And if that's the case, and I will move the entire combo box options inside of that check, we will render it. Otherwise, we will not render it at all. And so now you can see that when there's no results, there is nothing shown under. This is perfect. And if I start typing CFO, you can see that the results are displayed. Now, if I add a letter, which will make the search result empty, our search results disappear again. In that case, I think we should actually display a message that indicates that no results were found. I'll go right down after the combo box options. And here I'll have another check. We'll first check that we have a query so that the query string is not an empty string. And we'll check that the length of the filtered project array is this time equal to zero. In other words, we have no search results. And if these two conditions are true, I will render a P tag that says no results found. API. Nice, this is working. Obviously, it needs a little bit of styling. Let's add a class name with P-4. And we'll make the text a bit smaller text SM and text gray 500. All right, this is starting to look really, really solid. We still need to handle the page navigation when the user selects one of the projects by clicking on it or pressing the enter key. Remember, we left ourselves a comment here, so let's implement that now. This unchanged event, which happens when a user clicks on one of the elements or presses enter, will actually give us a value. And this value is handed to us from the combo box option component. So if I come down here, right now, our combo box option does not have any value. I need to assign a value to this component here. And we're going to set that to the whole project, the individual project for this combo box option. And so now with that in place, when we select this option, the project will be available here as a value. And so I can change this to project actually. And so what we want to do now is navigate the user to the individual project page. If we look at the URLs for our project for a minute, if I click on any of these existing projects like new customer portal, it will redirect me to slash projects slash eight. 
I can try another one, GraphQL API, and it's slash project slash one. So this number is equal to the project ID in our data. And since I received this project data, I can redirect the user to a route of slash project slash project that ID. One way to do this could be to change the window.location.href and set it to slash project slash project that ID. That once again, we're getting from this value here. So let's try that. Let's search for iOS and I will press enter here. Not sure if you've noticed, but there was a full page refresh here and we saw a little flash. And if you wonder why the comment palette is still open, well, remember we have this is open state that we set to true by default. And since we've loaded a new page, well, our dialog component is open to start with. I'll do a second demo, this time focus on the background and you should be able to see the UI flash when the page reloads. Three, two, one. So that's not a big deal, but let's see if we can make the experience a little bit better. In this case, we're using Next.js, so we can implement a client-side navigation by using the Next router. So up here, I will import the use router hook from Next router. And down in the start of the component, I will access the router with const router equals use router. And now I can go down in the on change here for the combo box. And instead of doing this window location href change, I can use router.push sending the user to slash projects slash project that ID. I will search for benefits. When I press enter this time, we will have a seamless client side navigation. Of course, you can see that the command palette remains open and we have maintained our query state. Let's fix that next. So I can remove that comment now since this is done and we can easily fix the comment palette remaining open by simply here using set is open to false. Remember, this is all it takes to control the open closed state of the dialogue because this is what we've used here as a piece of state. So now let's try one more time, emails, and this time it should close the comment palette and navigate immediately. Nice. All right, so now our comment palette closes, but speaking of closing, here's one thing that is crucially missing from our project. How do we actually open the comment palette? Up to this point, I've set the default value of is open to be true. So refreshing the page is our only way to have the comment palette showing. Let's change that. All right, remember comment palettes are for power users. We don't wanna have to reach the mouse and then find a button to click. So we're going to provide our users with a custom keyboard shortcut to trigger the comment palette. We've seen a few examples of comment palettes that were opening with the command plus P key combo. But there's a problem with that on the web since this is the default printing behavior. When you implement a custom keyboard shortcut like we're about to, be a good citizen and consider whether you're overriding a default browser behavior, which is not always helpful. Basically, I want to add an event listener for the key down event and the right place to add this behavior in a React project would be inside a use effect. So where I import use state, I will also import use effect from React. And after our query state here, let's create a use effect. So it will have a function. And then let's not forget the array of dependencies after that. All right, so I want to add an event listener here and I will go with window that add event listener. And we want to listen to the key down event. And then when that happens, we want to run a custom function that we will write in a second and let's call it on key down. And the reason we're going to put our logic in the custom function instead of inline here is we want to also be able to remove the event listener when the component unmounts to clean up after ourselves. And in the use effect, you can return a function which will run when the component unmounts. And here we will go with window.remove event listener and listen to the same event and remove the same on key down function. And of course here we need to define our custom function so a common shortcut for comment palettes on the web is command plus K or control plus K on Windows. So in that function, we want to receive an event, which will be the key down event. And then if the event dot key, which is the key pressed is equal to K. And we also have the event dot meta key, which is the command key or the event dot control key, CTRL key to support Windows. And I just need to add parentheses here to make sure this is evaluated together. So when that happens, we just want to toggle the command palette and it's really easy to do that. All I need to do is change the value of is open with set is open, which we will set to the opposite of is open. Now, because we're using this is open value inside our use effect, you can see that we have a little warning and I need to add this is open to my array of dependencies. 
and let's go try that out. I'm going to lug my keyboard presses on the bottom left so you can see the characters that I'm pressing. And now I'm going to hit Command K and the command palette's open. Nice. Let's hit Command K again and it's closed. And let's try Control K as well. And yep, it works. This means that I can finally change the is open default value, which is set to true here, to false. Like I mentioned up to this point, refreshing the page to set is open to true was our only way to show the command palette. But now we have a really convenient keyboard shortcut to toggle it on and off. We're almost done. Just one more thing that I think will take our project to the next level. If I command K very quickly, you can see that the way our comment palette appears and disappears is very abrupt and almost a little bit jarring and confusing at times. I think we can make things much smoother by adding a subtle transition when the comment palette opens and closes. Nothing crazy or over the top. Probably just a fade in with a subtle scale up when it opens and scale down when it closes. All right, so to handle the enter and leave transitions, I will use another headless UI component, the transition component. First thing first, let's import it next to dialog and combo box. And we're going to use nested transitions to apply different transition animations to different elements in this component. I'll start by wrapping the entire dialog component in a transition that root component, which will take care of orchestrating all the transitions. And this component needs to receive a show prop to determine when an entering transition and a leaving transition should occur. We'll use our is open state value. And when we do that, we can actually remove the open prop on the dialog component since it now will read the show state from the transition component automatically. The transition component will by default render as a div element. So here we don't really need to add a wrapping element. So I will add an as prop and set this transition root to be a React fragment instead. I just need to go to the top of my file and import fragment from React as well. All right, so now that we have our transition root, I want to animate the overlay right here in a specific transition. So I will wrap that element in a transition child component. We don't need the show prop here. The transition root element is responsible for that. But here I will add six different props that will allow me to control the animation on enter and on leave. All of these six props can receive CSS classes and will use Tailwind utilities here. For the enter prop, which is the classes that need to be present during the entire enter transition, I want to set a duration of 300 milliseconds and I'll add an easing curve of ease out. Enter from, which is our starting state for the transition, will be simply opacity zero and enter two will be opacity 100. And I bet you can imagine what the transition will look like. Our overlay's opacity will animate from 0% to 100% over 300 milliseconds. Let's give it a try with command K and pay attention to the overlay as it appears. Nice, once again. So let's take care of the leave transition. We're going to do something very similar here. The duration will be slightly shorter with 200 milliseconds. The easing this time will be ease in and we'll reverse the animation. We'll start with full opacity and end the transition with no opacity at all. And let's take a look. Just with that overlay transition by itself, the whole command palette toggling experience already feels much nicer. The search bar itself still feels a little bit abrupt, especially on leave, but we're going to take care of that now. Since it's very similar, I will copy this transition child here and I will paste it here to wrap our combo box component. And from here, we're going to tweak these transition props since we're doing a similar yet slightly different transition. The enter and leave props will actually remain exactly the same, but in the enter from, we'll start with 0% opacity and a scale of 95%. And we'll finish the enter transition with 100% opacity and a scale of 100%. So we're basically fading in our combo box, but also slightly scaling it up. And for the leave, we'll do the exact opposite, opacity 100 and scale 100, and opacity zero, scale 95 at the end of the leave transition. All right, and let's take a look at that. Let's toggle the command palette and close it. That is looking sweet. You can see the opacity fade and scale up and down as I toggle the command palette. All right, we're almost completely done. There is just this subtle little bug I want to show you and fix right now. Remember that when we toggle the command palette, no result is shown until I start typing. So let me search for CFO and we will go visit that project. 
and everything works properly. But now let me reopen the comment palette with comment K. And you can see our higher CFO project in the results already, even if the search input is empty. Since the comment palette component technically never was unmounted, our search query, which we use to filter the search results, is still set to what I've searched before, which was CFO. We actually want to reset the query state to an empty string whenever an element of the combo box is selected. Just like we've done for the set is open false, in our combo box parents on change prop, you might be tempted to reset the query state here with set query of an empty string. But there's a problem with this. By resetting the query state here, we will actually notice the search results change. I will search for GraphQL. And as I press enter, pay close attention to the search results. Ready? So next time I open the comment palette, we don't have that bug anymore since the query state has been reset. But we have that kind of jarring experience, especially if there's many results, where all the results disappear while the comment palette is fading out. What would be amazing here is to be able to reset the query after the element has finished transitioning, after the leave transition. Well, this is our lucky day. On the transition root component here, I can add a after leave transition, just like we hoped for, which just like you can imagine, will allow us to execute some code after the leave transition is complete. And so here's the place where I'm going to set query to an empty string. And let's make sure we remove it from our combo box here. And with that, we should have a super smooth user experience. So I'll do a search, navigate to one of the search results. And I hope here is when I press enter, the comment palette fades out completely before the query state is reset and therefore the results are removed. Ready? Nice. And if I reopen the comment palette, it's displaying its proper starting state. And with that, we are done. All right, let's do a quick recap of everything we've done because there was a lot. First, we used a dialog component from Headless UI to handle all the complex implementation of modal windows. All we needed to do is keep track of a little ease open piece of state and let Headless UI handle the rest for us. Then we used a combo box component from Headless UI. We wired the combo box input component to another piece of state, a search query string, which we used to filter our project based on the search input. This allowed us to display the relevant search results in our combo box options. Headless UI did a ton of hard work for us behind the scenes and also gave us this active render prop, which allowed us to style the currently active project in the combo box differently. We then used a bit of conditional logic to handle empty states. We provided a custom keyboard shortcut to toggle the comment palette like a power user. We used the next router to do a client side navigation when the user selects a project. And finally, we added a layer of polish and delight by adding some orchestrated transitions with Headless UI's transition component. Whew. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you happen to have a Tailwind UI license and are interested in more comment palette IDs, we recently added an entirely new comment palette category to Tailwind UI. And that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for sticking with me until the end. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.